Hello again, my amazing second grade and multi-age artists. Welcome to our sixth week of virtual art class together. This week, my friends, I am super excited because we are finishing up another art class project. Take a look again at what I made. Ooh, there are two different ways you could have started this art project, my friends. Again, we're looking at some different colors and we're looking at an artist who made art similar to ours. So let's take a look again at his artwork too. These two paintings were made by Friedensreich Hunterweiser. And as you can see, his lollipop trees are in both of them. And that's what inspired our art project that we are working on, my friends, is the artwork of Mr. Hunterweiser. So again, that's just a quick reminder about what our art project is and who helped inspire this artwork. We have a couple more steps to finish today, my friends, on our artwork. But before we can even get our art materials ready, I think we had better read our learning targets again just one more time together. So let's take a look, my friends. Here I go. Remember, I will start first. You repeat it after me. I can create abstract art. So remember, abstract art uses three things. It uses lines, shapes, and colors. We're looking for some very specific colors today, my friends. So we need to read our second learning target to remember back what colors. Here I go again. I can use warm and cool colors. Oh, I remember now. So we've been talking about warm and cool colors. Last week I asked you to sort out those different shapes and you sorted out colors like red, orange, and yellow, maybe even your pink into our warms, and you sorted out colors like green, blue, and purple into your cool colors. This week we're going to be finishing up with those cool colors and warm colors, and we're going to be adding our trees. So if you are ready to get started, my artists, I'm ready to show you what art supplies we need to finish up our art project today. Here are the art supplies we need to finish up our art project today. I have my red art folder, which already has my project, yep, safely tucked away that I started last week. Remember, that was our background where we did some different designs and patterns and warm or cool colors. I also need today, my friends, one nice sharp pencil, one pair of scissors, and some glue. You can either use a glue bottle or a glue stick. So please go grab these art supplies if you don't have them ready yet, my friends. And if you need to pause the video, of course you can. I'm going to go ahead, because I already have all of my art supplies ready, I'm going to open up my red art folder and go ahead and pull out my backgrounds that I made last week. Again, you only have to make one of these, my friends. I just made two so I could show you, friends, two different ways that you could do it. Again, you should have used either warm or cool colors last week, not both on your paper, okay? So today, I'm going to be continuing with my warm colored background, so that's the first thing I need to grab. There are other things as well, my friends. The second thing I need is my brown piece of paper. That's going to help make our tree trunks. And then you should have a nice stack of rainbow colors that are all the same size. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. We're going to need those too. Leave the yellow and your large sun shape in your folder still, my friends. Those are for our next art class project. So I'll go ahead and set my folder off to the side safely out of my way. And we're going to take a second look now at what I did pull out. Again, I have my background that I started last week. I have my brown piece of paper for my tree trunks. And I have these rainbow set of colors. And if you look, my artist, they should still be in order. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple, just like the rainbow. Now, just like our rainbow, though, we also have warm and cool colors right next to each other. I started my background as a warm colored background. So we need to answer a question real quickly, my friends. Should my trees be the same as my background and be warm colors? Or should I now switch and make my trees the opposite, and if I have a warm colored background, use cool colors? The answer is, my artist, because our learning target says both warm and cool, I have to put my warm colors away this time because my background is warm and use my cool colors for my trees. Again, that's if I did a warm colored background. If you did that cool colored background, then you'll use your warm colors for your trees, my friends. So see, I have my cool color with my warm, and now I have my warm with my cool. So 
So I'm going to set the cool aside for right now, and I'm going to show you what we need to do, my friends. So first thing first, let's make some tree trunks. I have this piece of paper, and I need to make four tree trunks out of my, my friends. Now the easiest way to do this, instead of just drawing random lines, is to actually fold my paper, my friends. And I like to fold it the long way. So watch, I'm going to fold my paper once the long way. And right now, I already have two trees then. But like Miss Grant had said, I need to have at least four trees. So I'm going to fold it one more time in half to make some nice skinny tree trunks. So I've only folded my paper twice, my friends. But by folding it and pressing nice and hard on those folds, I'm going to be able to open it up now, and I should see, look at that, with my folds, I have one, two, three, four tree trunks. And I can use my scissors now nice and carefully to cut right down those fold lines and get out my tree trunks. So I'm going to cut these out right down those fold lines. There's my first tree trunk, and then down my next fold line, there's my second tree trunk. And it's okay if they're not perfectly straight, my friends, right? It's okay if you get off a little bit. That's part of abstract art. We don't have to have exactly straight lines. So I have my four trees cut out now, my friends. Before I start making my lollipop tops, I need to decide how my trees will look on my paper. And again, I liked making really long ones. That way I can make long trees and short trees. Here's how. Maybe my first one, my brown paper might rest at the very bottom of my background, but maybe my next tree, my brown paper might come down a little bit and hang off, and that's okay because we can cut that off later. Maybe I'll space these two out, but maybe my next two trees, maybe I might have them closer together, or I can push them farther apart as well. And again, I can decide if I want to have a tall tree or if I want to pull it down to have a shorter tree. So before you glue anything, my friends, play around with it a little bit. See if you maybe want two short trees and a tall tree. Maybe I'll have a tall one for my second one and a short one. Try to play around with it and see what you want your tree heights to be. I'm going to play around with mine a little bit here. I think I'll go tall and I'll have a second one that's nice and tall, close to a short one. And then I'll even keep my last one nice and tall. All right, now that I have my trees where I want them, now I can start gluing. I'm going to use my glue bottle today, my friends, but again, you can use glue stick if that's what you have at home. I'm not going to flip these over. Instead, I'm going to do my dots of glue just right on top of them where they are right now. Dot, dot, not a lot. Now, this one's important because it hangs down the bottom. I don't need to put any glue below it. I just need to start right where my paper starts and only glue above. All right, now that I have all my nice glue dots, I'll use my two hands to go ahead and flip my trees over right where they were. So there's my first one lining up at the bottom. Again, we don't want any flying trees, my friends, so they should all at least touch the bottom or even go a little bit below the bottom of your background. Here's my second one. And in a moment here, my friends, once I have all my trees glued, then I'm gonna use my scissors to cut off that extra bit because we don't need our trees hanging below either. Here's my third tree that I have. Again, I'm pressing nice and gently. And my fourth tree. And here's a really other fun thing, my friends. Your trees don't have to be straight up and down. If you want your trees to be a little crooked as well, you can make them kind of crooked too. I just personally enjoy my trees being straight up and down. And again, that's my choice. You can choose as well. So now I have my four tree trunks glued down. Again, because I have that one that hangs off a little bit, I'm going to use my scissors now that it's glued down, and I'm going to give it just a little bit of a haircut. Now you can either throw away the scrap, my friends, or you could use it to make one of your other trees even a little bit longer as well. That's a different idea and a different way you can do it. I think I'll leave it there for now because I don't think I really need it. All right, I have my tree trunks. Now I'm gonna pull out either my cold paper that I have for my warm background, or again, if you did a cool colored background, you'll have warm colors. And I have three pieces of paper here, my friends. I have four different trees though, and on each tree we're gonna make a big circle, a medium circle, and a little itty bitty baby circle to kind of stack up just like Hunter Weiser's trees. So first thing that I'm gonna do, my friends, you remember our penguins last year, how we stack things on top of each other to kind of cut things the same? I'm gonna stack my three pieces of paper up because I find it faster this way. And right away, I'm gonna draw a nice big circle. I'm gonna draw a medium circle. And I'm gonna draw a small circle. And they don't have to be this close together, my friends, but do save some space on the other side because we might need more of our paper, okay? So I have a big, a medium, and a small. And I know they're kind of light and hard to see, so I'll hold them up for you, friends. 
Now I'm gonna keep my three pieces of paper together and I'm gonna cut all three at the same time just to save me some time, my friends, because by cutting three at the same time and holding onto them nice and tight, you see my left hand's holding on nice and tight, I can get three big circles cut by only cutting once. And look at this, I have one, two, three big circles already. So I could put one here and I could put one here and I could even put one there. So there's my first few circles, my friends. I could even cut out my medium circles next. So I'll go ahead and line my papers back up again and I'll cut out my medium circles again, holding my three pieces of paper together and cutting all three at the same time, just to make it a little bit quicker. Now, when I start stacking them up, I don't wanna match colors. No, no, no greens on greens, no oranges on oranges. I wanna mix it up, my friends. So I might put green on blue, maybe I'll put blue on purple, maybe I'll even put purple on green. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and cut out my small circles now too. Again, I'm holding all three pieces of paper together so that way I can cut out all three circles at the same time, thereby saving me some time and some drawing. All right, and again, I don't wanna match my colors, so I don't wanna put green on green, no, no, no. I'll put green on blue, and maybe I'll put blue on purple, and I'll put purple on green again. So look at that, I already have three trees already done just by stacking up my three pieces of paper, and I still have some more room to do my fourth tree. So I need to decide now, hmm, what color should my fourth tree start with? Maybe I'll start with a nice big green one. So I'll draw my big green. And then I'll have a nice medium sized blue. So I'll draw a medium on my blue. And I'll even draw a nice small one on my purple. And once again, I'll go ahead and I'll cut those out. This time though, I'll only cut out one at a time because I only need one big, one medium, and one more small. I don't need three this time. So there's my green and maybe it might overlap with my blue a little bit, that's okay. Or maybe I can pull my blue down a little. Maybe I can even pull my purple down a bit, push my green up. There's so many different ways you can do it with my artist, but as you might have noticed, all I've been doing so far is drawing some circles and cutting them out. Have I done any gluing of my circles yet? And I hope you friends answered no. I have not glued any of my circles yet because I wanna play around with them. Just like how I played around with where my tree trunks are, I might wanna play around with where my circles are and where they fit on top of my tree trunks. So in a moment here, once I have all of my circles cut out, like I do now, I might look at them and go, hmm, maybe I might want my purple circle to be just a little bit smaller. So maybe I might cut this one just a little bit smaller just to make it different. And let's see what else. Maybe, maybe I wanna switch some of these around a little bit. Maybe I want my purple there and maybe I want my green on top of it. Maybe then I can put my blue on here with that one. And I can swap these around until I find a way that I like them the best, my friends. Well, it's getting there. I think maybe, hmm, maybe I might also make my blue one a little bit smaller as well. And I might just cut this one a little bit smaller. Yeah, not too much. And if I do make a mistake, I still have a little bit of blue left that I could do, redo another one if I wanted to. And that way I can try that. The last thing I might wanna try is sliding my lollipops up and down on my tree branches or on my tree trunks to see where I might wanna glue them down. Once I'm happy with how all my lollipops look, then I can start gluing them down my artists, but not before. I want you to play around with them first, stack them different ways, try them different ways, even try cutting more circles if you want to fill in your trees before you start gluing. So now that I am happy with how my trees look, I'm gonna go ahead and glue mine down and I'm gonna speed this part up a little bit just to get you friends through this part. As always, if you need to pause here, please do, okay? And then catch up with me. I did save one last tree to glue with you friends just because 
I thought of a few more things that I wanted to talk with you about. First of all, when you're gluing, I like to start with the smallest little circle that I made and glue it down to the next biggest one. That way I'm going up my stack. And as you can notice here, my friends, I actually decided to add a few more circles into my lollipop trees. A couple of them have four circles. That is a great idea for some of my more advanced friends. If you really want to push yourself just a little bit more, try making trees that have at least four different colors on them. The last thing I really want to talk with you friends about is the idea of a perfect circle. Now, I want you to take that idea of what a perfect circle looks like and I want you to throw that idea away because we're working in abstract art and just like how I said about straight lines don't need to be perfect, the same rule applies for our circles. Now, if your circles aren't exactly like mine, that is actually better, my friends, because I always want you to try your best, and your best is going to look different than mine. So here is my finished art project, my friends. I have some cleanup that I need to do, like I need to throw some of my scraps away and put my glue and my art supplies away, but the important thing, my artists, is that because our art project is done now, I need to take a picture of it and put it either in Seesaw or Artsonia so that way me, Miss Greathead, can see it, okay? And this week I'm challenging my artists to take a picture with your artwork laying flat on a surface. For example, my artwork right now is flat on a table or you can set it on the floor, but I don't want to see hands covering up things anymore and I don't want to see a lot of background stuff. I want to see artwork that is beautiful just the way that you made it, so no hands in the way and you can hold the camera above and take your picture if that is an option for you friends, okay? So with that being said, my artists, I hope you have a fantastic fun time making your lollipop trees. I can't wait to see what your finished artwork looks like. For now, I'll say goodbye. And as always, have fun creating, my friends.